silence your cell phone, please. Don't be like me. Make sure it's off. <laughs> I've done it. Also, the uh, this morning upon Sunday is our annual omelet breakfast. We still have a few seats available for if you haven't made uh, arrangements to be here. The tickets are available, and Pam will be uh, with them right at, after the service, right outside the door here. It's always a good lunch, breakfast, lunch, meal. Uh, if you would like to contribute flowers for Easter Sunday, today is the last day you can receive your order for that. And there are slips on the table in the Narthex. Please pick one up, fill it out, put it with your money, and give it to someone who looks official. <laughs> <laughs> who exactly? No, not you. <laughs> <laughs> who exactly does it go to? Um, well, okay, but this will be after the offering, so. Give it to someone that looks at it. Tom will take it. Very good. Yeah. Tom's going to take it. Okay. Also, uh, we're very fortunate, you may have noticed, I'm not alone this morning. Uh, I am graced with the presence of uh, Donna Batchelor. She is the uh, vicar at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, finishing up her intern year there. And they have graciously allowed her to come and be with us several mornings each week. She's here on Monday morning doing a Bible study and on Friday available to help you as you might see fit. Um, please, please, please introduce yourself to her and get to know her. I'm hoping she's going to be around a bit after she finishes her intern year at event. Okay, uh, this week there will be a few hundred extra services. <laughs> <laughs> it only seems like that to those of us who are preparing for it and doing the bulletins. Um, the first will be on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, uh, service commemorating Monday Thursday. And the second will be the Good Friday service at 7 o'clock on Friday, which is a good time to have a Good Friday service. And next week on Easter Sunday, the service will, as always, be here at 10 o'clock. A um, couple of announcements about the service today. The gospel this morning is the longest gospel reading of our three-year cycle. Sit. Please sit. And any time during the service that you feel like you need to sit, sit. Uh, the first thing I did when I came here was ask the council to give me an armchair. Okay? So I don't get up and sit down easily anymore. We all appreciate it. None of us, well, a few of us are 21. And uh, mode movement is a lot harder than it used to be. If you feel like you'd like to sit, sit even if everyone else is standing. So we'll sit for the gospel this morning. At the end of the gospel, I will invite you to stand at the crucial part of the gospel. And, oh yes, the last hint. Somehow, the 30 of us who uh, reviewed the bulletin and approved it missed the fact that we have the right words wrong too. So ignore the notes that are printed. For those of us like me who don't read music, that'll be easy. Uh, and sing what is played. Because they know what they're doing, and you'll recognize the tune immediately when they start to play. Okay, let's sit back and begin our worship with the band.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When they entered Jerusalem, the holy city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread their garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and all who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we may in enter into life with you. For the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. 
as we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings and death, burial and resurrection, we pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. But like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am useless as a broken heart. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. But my times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love.
Our second reading for today is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the time of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. because of me this night for it is written I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered but after I am raised up I will go ahead of you to Galilee Peter said to him though all become deserters because of you I will never desert you Jesus said to him truly I tell you this very night before the cock crows you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, 
I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. <coughs> then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of the men with Jesus put his hand on the sword and drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which says it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard, and of the high priest, and going inside, he said, with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? 
Now, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him and said, you also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, <clears throat> another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out, and he wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is it to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went out and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury farmers. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests, the elders did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to releasing a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they handed Jesus over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, Pilate's wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of him in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, well, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Please stand. Then the 
the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. And as they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Cyrus. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, also along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling on Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the whole holy city and appeared to men. Now when the centurion and those who were with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were there also, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. 
Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O God. Enable us to boldly confess in every time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. 
Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save your creation, O God. Ever, every living being you had made has purpose. Give us renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the fields, service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live alongside us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecuted for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hands of their enemies. Bring, bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. We remember now especially the Ukraine. Merciful God, save those who cry to you in any need, O oh God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial, and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present with those feeling isolated, lonely, or fearful. Be especially with Beverly, Lisa, Eddie, Carol, Don, John, Sharon, Tim, Robin, Maria, Marcy, Aaron, Joan, Elaine, Hannah, Mike, Bill, Mike, Carrie, Mary Lou, Christine, and May. Merciful God, save us, your, in, save us in your love, O oh God. Renew the work of church musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, save us at the last, O God. We give thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servant's love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial that every knee would bend in praise to you, merciful God. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of God's peace among us.
your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered, in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our delight, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, <coughs> almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace in our prayer, a song of grateful hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.